Hey, it's a regular guy. Man, I just got back from the uh, tactical games. I gotta say, it was both humbling uh, and exhausting at the same time. Uh, this video is gonna be about the equipment that I have with me and what I will change next time going back because this is kind of a lesson learned. You always get better, that's what we're trying to do. So some of you, if it's your first time out there, you're like, what do I need to bring, what do I need to bring? Everybody wants to know first thing, what kind of weapons do I need to bring? So that's what I'm gonna hit first. I'm gonna try to keep the video 10 minutes or under you, let me know how I do. Uh, I was running these, it was a mixed uh, AAC uh, lower and a short barrel upper on a SBR that I have. I wasn't sure if it was gonna be close range, long range, and I was like, oh, I'm not sure. Uh, so I'm running the MRO with a SIG three times magnifier. I got over at my place I go to, Deep South Defense. Uh, in hindsight, I should have run an ACOG, and my backup weapon that I had has an ACOG on it, and I'll show it to you in a second, but they won't let you change once you start, so that was a lesson learned on me, because it's more about precision shooting over there. It's about small targets after you're exhausted, like 70 yards out, a three-inch circle. You, you've got to have your stuff fine-tuned good. I mean, not, not like a man-sized silhouette, because even though I, I missed a bunch, all of them were within a five-inch circle, um, it's like that would have been a kill, but that's not the game. You have to be set up for the game. So this is a good weapon, don't get me wrong. And the magnifier worked good, but uh, it's a Juliet 3 micro on the back of my uh, uh, MRO right here. I mean, I like it, it worked good, but I would definitely go with the ACOG next time. You also, the biggest thing is, I'm so glad I had a good sling. I got this one from a tier one citizen, Abner Miranda, if you're watching brother it worked great he has a bungee cord system in his sling and you do a lot of running and carrying your rifle for long distances this uh this bungee cord having a good sling set up will really help you You have to be able to transition quickly i have the qd mounts right here the only thing i want to say on that is i got some of these magpul qd mounts that work really good because i had some others i don't know where i got them but kind of off brand or whatnot and i've been using them and I don't know, they kind of wear out and you don't keep them old right. You could put the, uh, the QD mount in, say like this right here real quickly, and then you just start tugging the heck out of it. And look at that, it came out. If you do different directions, and it makes sure you can just shape the heck out of your sling and it's not gonna come out. I also had mine tied off with 550 cord uh, just to make sure they didn't fall out. Just kind of dummy corded through something where it wouldn't interfere with anything, but if it fell out, it would still be attached to my body and I wouldn't lose my rifle. Hey, techniques used by some, not by others. I'm from the military and we dummy cord everything. <laughs> and I'm glad I did because there was a lot of moving and shaking. My backup weapon that I took, in case something would happen on mine went down, um, I did have the SIG M400 that I carried when I was a police officer and it has the four times magnification ACOG on it. And to be honest, this is what I should have run. It is heavier, I admit, because it's a full size rifle, but for the precision shooting that I was needing, because it wasn't the CQB, but not to say another one might be CQB next time. This one was all about precision shooting. And I mean, I needed the four times magnification uh, with the, also it's still illuminated in there. I don't know, I mean, go with what you will. Some of the high speeds out there, they got the uh, LPVO with the one by six and the uh, uh, quick throw lever on it. I mean, I ain't got that kind of money. I'm a regular guy. <laughs> get what you can afford, but at least you got a red dot with a magnifier. I mean, you'll be good, but I should have run something with a little more magnification, but that's just me. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I carried all my stuff in this Pelican box. It's a Pelican uh, 1535 Air, and I'm not no promoter of Pelican or nothing. Uh, Y'all know I'm not sponsored by anyone, <laughs> myself only. But um, it worked good, but I should have had a bigger box. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invest and get like a 1606 or 1610 or 1615 or something that it's a little bit bigger just to hold more of my crap. You know what I mean? Uh, you just you always pack more stuff than you think you're going to, and I wasn't able to get everything in there. Um, let's see. Other than that, y'all know my standard plate carrier here that I run. The uh, I mean, It's a standard AR500 plate carrier with some uh, level 3 plus plates in it. Uh, my bungee system worked out good that's on on here that i made some of y'all seen that video on it it held it tight to my body uh, i will say that i'm going to come up with a different setup i did have to take the uh, mag pouches off the front on more than one occasion because the first time that i was picking up a 150 pound sandbag i had mags up front and when you're trying to roll that up on you and stuff you, you can't get it up over your your magazines there 
trying to get it up on your shoulder or whatnot to, to carry it for a long way. So then you're carrying it like in front of you and it's 150 pounds. It's, uh, it's pretty rough to be honest. And uh, so that was a mistake on my part. So then if I saw it was gonna be a lot of front carrying, I, I'd take the mags off. But then I didn't have good mag pouches for magazines for my rifle. So I, might, I put them in my dump pouch a couple of times. <coughs> But lesson learned on my part, a lot of people run the slick plate carrier. The professionals you see there, they've got some minimalistic um, <coughs> CrossFit type vest with <laughs> no ballistic protection at all. But like I said, <laughs> it's tactical, but it's still a game. <coughs> so this might be good for combat, but it's still good for the game, but you can always hone in and get better stuff. <coughs> but I don't have that kind of money, so I have to run what I brung, you know what I mean? Other than that, it worked good. It's just having your equipment able to change your magazine pouches out for that specific game. Because it might be three mags of rifle, three bags of pistol, or it might be five and five. You just have to be able to change your equipment quickly. And if you don't have a setup like that, kind of like on my battle belt, my stuff is set up for combat. These always stay there like that. They're not set up to change out quickly with some G codes or something like that. So that's a failure on my part. But hey, live and learn, adapt and overcome. The dump pouch, that's a must. I recommend it. Some people got the huge ones, some people got the small ones. I think mine's a medium size <laughs> dump pouch. It will hold three rifle, or a correction, five rifle magazines side by side and not come out and fill it up. And so I was able to hold five, which is the most you're gonna carry. Five uh, pistol and five rifles, the most you'll ever carry. And some of the time I was running three up here, so I might've had, you know, two in there or something. <clears throat> um, I took my med kit off the back, you don't need it. I took my knife out and just laid it to the side and just left the sheath on there because uh, this is for combat, not for games. Uh, <coughs> the pistol. I was just running the Glock Gen 5 with the uh, red dot on it, Hollow Sun 507. Some of y'all seen my video on it. Uh, I knew I was in trouble when I see somebody pull out the Cicado next to me. And I'm like, okay, I'm, uh, I'm already in trouble here. It's kind of like when I pull out the red dot on MRO and somebody pulls out the LPVO uh, with this, uh, one by six with the quick throw lever. I'm like, okay, I'm already outmatched, but hey, I'm a regular guy. Uh, I was shooting the tactical division. That's the only one that shoots the red dot. Everybody else shoots the iron sight. So make sure you know which division you're picking on what equipment you can run. So that, that is important. Uh, other than that, magazines, I would recommend bringing five and five, but one extra on each. So really six and six. The most you ever carry is five rifle, five pistol, but in case one of them breaks or something, you got an extra. But people are good there. They'll always like let you borrow one if you need to. Um, clothing. I was wearing these. Uh, these are not 5.11s. These are proper. Uh, some of you out there know them. I'm from law enforcement. And uh, these are just like some 5.11 tactical pants. They're pretty lightweight. This is what I wore out there. Um, in hindsight, I would have worn some tactical shorts or something like that. Um, not Maybe not the uh, uh, runner shorts that a couple of people had on there, you know, showing the guy thigh like the one's riding all the way up. It's like, okay, we here for a marathon or we here <laughs> for some tactical games. So, uh, which speaking of running, shoes. Uh, I was wearing these lightweight boots that are like tennis shoes. I bought them my last deployment. Um, they, they work really good and I know, don't make fun of it. My, my laces were messed up. So I have 550 cord in my laces. All right, some of y'all, okay, you can make fun if you want to. Um, but hey, you use what you got. Uh, you run what you brung. Other than that, what, what would I change on this deal? I didn't really have to do anything that was really hiking or tactical or anything like that. So I'm, I'm gonna wear like some people had on my running shoes that have good tread, some no bulls or something. Now you don't wanna wear some straight street runners that have no tread on them because you'll be in the dirt and you'll be slipping around or on gravel, but uh, maybe some no bull CrossFit shoes or something like that. Uh, that's what I'm gonna run next time. And I'm gonna wear some tactical shorts to stay a little bit cooler because you're in the sun like 13 hours. So bring your sunscreen. Uh, hearing protection. I have these Peltors here. Everybody's like, dope, man, I got the Peltors. Okay, I did not wear the Peltors because you have to do so many transitions with your rifle, like either taking it on and off and putting it somewhere else or putting it on and slinging it either this shoulder or behind you like I like to do. People's were getting knocked off. So I was wearing the, the I don't know whether it's Surefire, the three plug, uh, three uh, triple flange or whatever, some inner ear that don't get snagged on your sling or something like that. Personal preference, do what you want, but uh, take it with a grain of salt, but that's what I would recommend. Uh, I had my gloves here. I never needed to wear them. I didn't do anything that I needed my gloves for. It wasn't that type of operation. 
Uh, your eye protection, you definitely need eye protection out there because they'll be like, your eye protection falls off and be like, now stop shooting, get, get, put your eye protection on, keep, then keep firing. They're, they're very big on safety out there, which is, uh, hey, I, I like that. Um, as far as ammo, the most you'll need is probably 200 rifle, 200 pistol for either, you know, a skirmish or a tactical games. It's a couple of days because your, most of your basic ammo counts was like, uh, smallest was like five per mag. The, the biggest was like, uh, like 15 per mag or something like that. So that being said, I might take a couple of uh, 20 round AR mags next time. And, uh, you know, just to lighten my load. So it's, uh, fits under my vest and stuff a little better. But other than that, that's that. As far as, uh, knee pads, elbow pads. Some people had them, most people did not. I had them on standby. I actually never needed, there was one time that I probably could have used them, but I didn't and I was still fine. So um, other than that, take them if you want them, elbow pads, knee pads. Other than that, those are my lessons learned from this. Uh, we covered, you know, your pistol, your rifle and stuff like that. Read the rules on the rifle. Can't have any compensators or anything like that. And only one magnifier on there. Can't have like multiple optics like uh, the uh, ACOG with the RMR sitting on top of it type deal. It's gotta be like the one optic. So just, just read the rules on that. But other than that, you see the deal about the rifle, the pistol, the, you only got three calibers on the pistol, 940 and 45 stuff like that, but th those are all simple. But these are the lessons I learned and how I'm gonna to improve to step up my game next time. If you've had different experiences or if this helps or something, let me know after you do your first event. Um, I hope it does, that's a regular guy's opinion.